One concept that underpins much of what we see in 3D graphics, from how things appear in our viewport to how final objects are rendered, involves something known as normals. We briefly saw a glimpse of how to spot these in a previous lesson, but we've been observing them any time that we've been in solid shading view. Notice how our cube is shaded. It looks solid, as if a lamp somewhere is illuminating each face, and this face appears further away from the source. Blender is shading each of these visible faces because of the way that the normal is pointing. In Blender, all faces have a front and back face. If we select our cube and toggle into edit mode, then go over to our Mesh Edit Mode Overlays. We can view our face normals. I'm going to increase the size a little bit to make it more obvious. We can see that they're pointing outwards from the cube. That is the normal direction for each of these faces. It signifies the front of the face. I'll toggle into Wireframe Mode, then go to Mesh, Normals, or use the hotkey Alt N, and I'll select the first option, Flip. Now these lines all seem to be pointing into the cube. We have now flipped these normals, and all the faces on the outside are what's known as the back faces. If you know anything about game engines, you'll know that back faces are not rendered. This is a process known as backface culling. It's a way to save on resources. Blender will render the back faces of meshes, but we can simulate back face culling by going to the drop down arrow next to our viewport shading options and tick back face culling. Now it looks like we're looking into the cube. All the front faces have disappeared. It gets a little trippy if we rotate our view around. That's because the normals of the faces closest to us are pointing away, and the normals of the faces further away from us are pointing towards us. All back faces have been culled, and so are therefore invisible. We'll use a different example now. I'll toggle the normal view off in Edit Overlays, then I'll toggle into Object Mode and delete our default cube. I'll now add a sphere, toggle into Edit Mode, and delete the top half so that this looks like a bowl. Under my viewport overlays, I'll enable face orientation. The inside of the bowl turns red. This indicates that these are the back faces. So how does knowing any of this help us in any practical sense? Shouldn't Blender just know what is an outwards facing normal? For the most part, Blender does a very good job of figuring out the normal direction, especially when it comes to primitives or any kind of consistent topology. But you'll know straight away if there is a flipped normal, the lighting doesn't look quite right. Having your faces point in the wrong direction can cause a lot of problems. I'll toggle into front view, numpad 1, and I'll enable X-ray by using Alt-Z. Then tab into edit mode. I'll hit 3 on the number row to toggle into face select mode. Then box select half of this hemisphere. I'll now hit Alt N and flip these normals. I'll toggle back into object mode, get rid of X ray, and turn on shade smooth. Obviously, these are the back faces, and I'll just turn that setting off for the moment. Blender is trying to render this bowl consistently, but because there is a 180 degree shift on the faces either side of this line, it gets confused. Hence this strange lighting here. Nine times out of ten, when you see something like this on your mesh, it means that somewhere there's a flipped normal. The fix is simple. We tab into edit mode. My selection is still active. And then you can either hit Alt N and from the contextual menu, select Recalculate Outside, or you can use the hotkey for this, Shift N. If we enable our face normals in the edit overlays, 
we should see that all the blue lines are now pointing out. Tab back into object mode and that horrible shading is gone. Normals can also affect how meshes are interpreted for smoothness. This hemisphere is set to smooth and all the normals are pointing outward. In edit mode, let's overlay the vertex normals. Lines should now protrude from each vertex instead of the center of each face. I'm also going to enable split normals. Currently, we don't see any because both the vertex normals and split normals occupy the same space. But now let's select an edge loop and go to the edge menu and mark sharp. We should now see a crease on the surface, but we'll also see from each of these vertices along this edge loop, two purple lines are now facing slightly apart on each vertex. What Blender is doing to create this crease is splitting the normal so that at this junction, the smoothing stops, then continues in a slightly different direction on the other side. So these are just a few demonstrations to help you understand the concept behind normals. Remember the handy hotkey, Alt-N, and how to toggle on your overlays so you can see which way a normal is facing. Once you're comfortable with these concepts, let's start taking a look at some editing tools.